now you can go ahead with the different things as well okay you can go ahead with the different things as well you can use the you can simply use the you know duplicated as well okay and you can use the company data set let's go and run this and here you can see it we got the output in terms of true false logical output we got right we got the output in the logical manner right or okay like if you just if you just wanna you know remove the duplicates from your data set and uh, you know you wanna the data set and in that data set only unique value unique values are there so how you can do these you can simply okay go ahead with your either your original data name or like i did before i can simply use any other data name let's say my df data frame i can simply go with this df okay so why i am creating this this is just the name of the data set okay nothing else okay so i want my new data set okay which is having only unique values okay of my previous data set so what i can do is i can simply use this and i can use the unique method is there right so just by using unique method i'll be adding my company's data set over here see and just use the control plus enter to run and now here you can see this is my data frame if you see so basically i remove the duplicates from my data as well okay i remove the duplicates from my data as well now you will see that basically there are two duplicated values right so we just remove this now the value is going to be the 16 because there are two duplicate values okay so from overall 18 observations if we remove the two duplicates so basically we'll get the data of 16 observations right so that is the thing now okay like if you wanted to find out the unique values by using you know like many times okay you don't want to go with this inbuilt functions if you want to you just wanted to go ahead with any particular library so for that what you can do is you can use the different libraries as well okay and you know in r we have a very popular library which is nothing but you know the deep layer library the deep layer library let me show you okay this particular library okay the description for this deep layer library which is nothing but a grammar of data manipulation you see a grammar of data manipulation so here you can see the all about the you know grammar of data manipulation language which is a library which is nothing but deep layer right so here you can see the many different things you can do you can start by you know the apply function on across multiple columns sorry so if you see that the second thing is you can add the columns as well okay see add columns you know you can do multiple things okay you can you know the count the observation in each group okay then you can do filtering as well right you can do the filtering joins as well you can see if you okay so then you can sort your data as well right so you can sort your data as well you if you see right likewise you can do multiple things okay if you wanted to explore more about deep layer library you can simply go ahead and check this okay if you wanted to go at these okay just go ahead and check this right now okay let us go ahead with this our thing so for that initially we can simply go ahead and use the deep layer library okay In initially we can simply import the deep layer library right so just import the deep layer library by using the library and in the you know curve open bracket you can simply import it right see i just imported it and now after this what we can do 
we can simply go ahead and apply a distinct function of my deep library you know deep library on my company data set like i created the you know the new data set which is nothing but the df right and in the df there are no missing values but in the company's data set we have the missing value so now again let's use the company's data set instead of df okay this is again to show you you know for doing single things there are multiple ways okay like many time like if you see like if you go with the you know any like uh, if you go for any interview okay so at that time okay they are trying to you know they they want the answer not in a specific manner they want the answer in the you know uh, they want the you know multiple answers right like this way also you can do it this way also you can do it right and why you are going with this why you are going with this right like this so if we going with this particular library which means that okay it's a you know the you know good way because you see that the inbuilt functions which are just defined by the r right but the deep layer library is the, the aim of this particular library in the name itself you will see that it's a grammar of data manipulation okay which means that it will while you are working with a very big data set as well so if you if you are using this deep layer library it will give you the multiple data pre processing functions okay so then you can simply use this library for the data manipulation or the data pre processing data click data cleaning in short right so here what we are doing is we are simply using the let's say unique we are just creating a new data set unique companies we can simply say okay because we are finding out the unique companies okay now here you can use the you know equal to or you can use a alter alt plus hyphen okay this particular symbol as well if you see many a time the you know in r people are used to apply this particular function okay while they are creating any uh, uh, this this particular symbol instead of equal to right so they will be using alt plus hyphen for this particular to get this particular symbol in it right so now here we can do it we have the distinct function for this okay and here just use the company data set so this is the one way this is the one way to write your code okay what is another way what is another way this is the one simple way like we also you know doing this all the things but if you wanted to go ahead with another way so you can simply use first your company name okay company data set and then you will use percentage okay greater than symbol then percentage okay you will use this particular symbol to apply this or you to create the in short the pipeline in r okay like first what what you are doing okay it's also easy to read your code as well like you are just uploading your data set you are finding out the distinct values of your data set right after finding out the distinct value you can apply any other function as well you can apply any other function as well you can find out the mean of your data set as well you can find out the summary as well right but our aim here is to find out the unique values right so that's why we are doing it so this is the thing and to see the data so you can see the unique companies are here total 16 observations if you wanted to see you can see over here see this is my data okay the company data set is there right so that's how you can simply go ahead with okay like there are many different ways guys right to find out this like if you wanted to go ahead and select the particular column and if you wanted to check this so here in the distinct column okay in the distinct column if you see like let me copy this particular code over here so you will be able to okay you will also get this particular code right so you will understand this particular code 
okay this is the thing now if you wanted to apply this particular function this distinct function on your company data set so you can okay like if you wanted to go ahead with singular particular column so you can simply add the column name over here like in my company's data set as we know what are the different columns are there so here if you see what are the different columns are there account number account name status gross income like that we have the multiple columns so let's go go ahead with the let's say the account name right see account name now here if you see okay what we are doing is okay we are just going with this and finding out the distinct value in this particular column okay which means we are just finding out the distinct value for this particular column right so that's how you can go ahead and apply this thing on multiple okay like on uh, like by using the multiple different ways i can say okay guys do you know about the mysql like uh, we'll be learning that uh, like we'll be talking about that mysql in the tomorrow session right so if we talking about the distinct so like in mysql we'll be using distinct to find out the unique values so here also like i mentioned the you know the name for the data unique companies okay which means that we are just finding out the unique companies from this particular data set right i'm just finding out the unique companies from this particular my company data set right or in short the you know the unique companies or distinct companies right so that is it okay nothing else unique means distinct okay different from any other okay now after this guys okay let's see uh let's say like i mentioned previously okay uh, like the data transformation okay so which means that also known as a data scaling okay so if we talking about the data scaling so like okay let me uh, tell you one example okay about the data scaling so like <clears throat> let's say uh, take one example of let's say we have the uh, multiple columns okay in my data set and let's say one column in my data set which is nothing but the we can say the age okay let's say we have the employees data set and we have the employees data set then we have the name we have the age employee id is there we have the address is there <clears throat> the position of the employee is there okay the age column is there the salary is there right of the employees so likewise we have the several variables in my data set so if we see the data set so in your data set let's just take the two columns age and expected salary okay just take the two example the two columns from your data set first one is nothing but the age and second one is going to be the expected salary so guys what will be the what is the you know the common range of age like as we know age starting with zero newborn baby okay then what is the upper level let's say 100 okay yeah or let's go ahead with 80 or 100 okay so like uh, like i mentioned 0 to 100 okay so let's let us go ahead with this now what is the range of salary the employee salary i am not mentioning any data set anywhere so because we are talking about the example that's why you can yes yearly sa sa salary annually right so what is the salary of the employees let's say we have the data scientist so what is the range of the salary of the data scientist let's say 7 to 11 lpa so if we're talking about lpa which means that six digit okay number or if we're talking about 11 lpa so that is nothing but a seven digit number right so 
if we compare our age which is which is nothing but the either one or two digit number okay and if we are comparing this with the six or seven digit number okay and you are using these two same column okay to build the one model right you are using the age column as well as the salary column to build the one model okay which means that if you created the model definitely your estimated sal or that particular salary column is going to be you know your highest weightage column which means that your model is totally biased towards your salary column because the range of the salary column is very high understood so your range of your salary column is very high so which means that model is just totally biased towards this particular column and model definitely neglect the age column okay if you're talking about the weightage weightage is not same for both the columns so to convert the unbiased data set because of the weightage is not same for each and every column so for we have to convert this particular data set this particular two columns okay from you know not same weightage to the same weightage columns right and then we can simply go ahead with the building the model then at that time the model we are getting which is unbiased one right which is unbiased one so for that okay what are the different data scaling method data transformations method are there so if you talking about okay so basically we will be using the you know the multiple methods okay like we have the standardized and we have the normalized method right for this so let's see one of this so for understanding purpose okay so for that what i am doing i can simply creating one simple data set okay one simple data set let me create the data right not this particular data set so let me go ahead with the new name which is the d1 right this is my data set okay now after these what i am doing i can simply use the data dot frame okay here you can see one function automatically pops up and here if you see okay we'll be using the data dot frame now let's say my first column name is x okay and i am seeing that okay like in that particular column okay i'll be taking a you know the random numbers from the normal distribution like in r to find out the random numbers it's very easy just use the r norm which means that just we are just taking the random normal numbers or random num normal variables now for that how many random numbers we want from the normal distribution let's say 10 values we want okay so then after that we'll have to add the parameters of the normal distribution over here okay we'll have to add the parameters of the normal distribution over here so let's say my mean of the normal distribution is going to be let's say 30 right and my standard deviation of this is going to be let's say 20 okay or not not 20 20 will be you know so much bigger you will find that the uh, variance is quite high okay so let's go ahead with the point two right point two is standard deviation is nothing but the variance is 0 0.2 okay 0 0.2 which is nothing but very small variance is that okay now after this let's create the new column okay y column which is a new column and now let's take a random numbers from any other distribution let's say uniform distribution so for that i'll be using the r for random unif unif for the uniform distribution right so i'll be using this okay r unif and then here again i'll have to mention how many values i wanna find out which is normal one the minimum value or the the parameter here if you see in the uniform distribution there are total two parameters 
first one is minimum and second one is maximum so the minimum range for this values will be like uh, let's it go, let's go ahead with 3 and let's go ahead with maximum value for this let's say 5 okay this is my data frame let's go and create this data frame let's go and run this and see this is my data frame okay so this is my x value in the x value you will see that the values okay which is around the 30 with the different with the variance in that which is nothing but 0 0.2 right so that's why you will see that the difference which is very less okay like the 30.34 then 30.13 29.99 if you increase this value standard deviation let's say by two so you will see that the range will also increase you will see the values like the 28 32 like this which means variation is also high like after this okay this is my uniform distribution okay which is the minimum range for uniform distribution this is totally customized okay this is a customized one you can take any minimum value either negative positive no matter you can take any positive value but like if you are taking the minimum value which should be minimum to your maximum value let's say if you are taking your minimum value as a 10 and you are taking as your your maximum value as the 8 which means that 10 is not minimum than 8 10 is maximum than 8 so that's why okay we'll have to take the minimum value which is less than your maximum values okay so okay these things you will have to remember so this is my data okay you will find that the data is between 3 to 4 okay you never see the data which is uh, outside the three minimum value three and maximum value five so you will always see this data y values will be in a, you know which is totally random but these values will be in the range three to five because we mentioned the range minimum and maximum and these are the two different parameters of the uniform distribution okay and you see like many times okay like for many different cases sometimes client don't have the data to share with you so at that time you will have to create your own data okay you will have to go with either survey or either simulation you will have to go with and create your own data because sometimes the problem will be very rare let's say cancer okay so if you want to find out the you know the data of the cancer patients so it will be so difficult you will find that let's let's take a very rare cancer okay like the cancer will be like uh, like uh, like someone someone got the cancer like in out of 1 million so at the time to find out the patient data is very much difficult it's very hard to find out okay so to build or to do research for that you know the medicine to find out the medicine for that particular uh, you know the cancer you will have to go with the research first so for that for doing the research we need the data so for creating the data okay we will need this kind of distributions right depending upon the like the first we'll have to find out the which kind of distribution cancer that that cancer data is following right so like for okay and then we we can simply use this term okay r unif or r normal or r exponential depending upon any other distribution which is there in the statistics you can use any distribution okay and you can create the data like this that i created over here okay so it's it's not like that which means like client uh, like sometimes never give you the data client only give you the problem statement okay sometimes not all the times so which means that at that time you will have to collect your own data right so that is the thing so for that we should know how we can generate the data so that's how i generated my data okay now i just wanted to go and do the you know you know the data scaling because if you see this is my x data the range of x data is between the you know around 29 to 30 okay let's say 29 to 31 okay and the range of the y data is going to be the three to five okay so you see the tremendous difference between the ranges 
okay so for that reason we can simply go ahead and apply the scaling okay so scaling is nothing but the you know transforming your data into the same range okay so let's say uh, let's say just to show you okay i'm creating the you know the data to or i can simply use this name as the scale data right this is my scale data okay to avoid any confusion okay so this is my scale data now i can simply use this scale okay this particular function and here you can see just put your data okay just put your data i am just putting my data okay and let's go and run this and after this here you will see okay we got the scale data okay this is my scale data now can you tell me the difference between this particular my original data and the scale data if you see our original data is nothing but the range of x is in between 20 let's say 29 to 30 and the range of y is going to be the 3 to 5 but here in the scale data okay the range of x the range of x is going to be minus 3 to plus 3 the same for the y the range of y is also between minus 3 to plus 3 right so which means that we just use this one simple word to convert my original data right so like it's it's not like that data is small so we we can we can use this thing it's not like that if your data let's say you have the millions of columns and all these things right if you wanted to transform your data into the single range which is minus 3 to plus 3 also the range of the your standard normal distribution so you can simply use this this is also nothing but the one theorem in the statistics which is very popular which is nothing but the central limit theorem right so see basically just by using that theorem this is just the okay the application of the theorem central limit theorem okay so here you can see that okay we have the two distribution okay we have the two distribution and if we we apply the scale and we converted our data from any range okay take any range like here our range is nothing but the 29 to 30 and 3 to 5 now you can free to take any range you can take any range in thousands okay you can take any range in lakhs or millions or billions whatever it may be okay you can take any minimum value you can take any bigger maximum value no matter okay if you are using scale function which means that definitely it will able to transform your data from okay in the range minus 3 to plus 3 okay that is the you know application uh, you know power of central limit theorem right and we can in simple words okay the power of your data scaling right so that's how you can apply this thing over here right now guys uh, let us go ahead and understand the let's say our data visualization techniques okay because these are the few things okay there are lot of things you can do depends on your data right if you wanted to more explore about the data cleaning data visual, uh, you know data pre processing okay for that you need to download your own data okay let me you know tell you the few sites like the you know open data is there then we have the kaggle is there as well as you can simply you know data dot government you can you can take the data from the governments you know sites as well like that you can take the multiple data right you can use any your data you can use any data okay and try to clean that data okay apply any different things like try to find out the missing values try to find out the outliers from the data remove those outlier or fill those outlier depending upon your choice okay it's totally you know it's it's totally your choice to you know how how you can clean your data so that basically for building the model right 
so that is totally define your how your model is right whether your model will be strong or poor model or moderate strong model like that okay depending upon the capabilities of your cleaning okay it will give you the model okay you will see that the accuracy in the model okay and see guys this is the you know 80% of tasks if you are working in the, as a you know data scientist and you got the you know the project from a very scratch you created your own data at that time you will have to work on your data at least 80% 70 to 80% of your total data pro, data science project duration right to clean and pre process your data and next thing is to just apply the models because we know that already you know the professionals created the algorithms right right this is they just created invented the algorithms of machine learning deep learning and now you are seeing the algorithms of the you know llm models you can see so that is happened because of the transformer transformer is again the you know one of the algorithm right so now if you are seeing the chat gpt and all these are also the you know you know invented by the algorithms okay you will find that okay like if you see the example about the chat gpt you will find that they took the around 45 trillion you know 45 trillion uh, we can say that the gb of data uh, not the 45 trillion uh, uh, 45 tb of data they took to train the gpt which is nothing but our chat gpt not the chat gpt 4 okay they are constantly improving the chat gpt 4 right which means like we are just adding any prompt in the chat gpt which is our free version we are using okay we all have the access to to that so we are using that free version so they are giving us the free version not because you are using it free okay just because they have to collect the data from you like what kind of like the data you are just putting over there in the chat gpt so that data is nothing but the you know the gold like them okay gold for them and they will be using that particular data to build their new models like the chat gpt plus gpt4 right so that is the thing so data is important and pre-processing is, is again the very important part for this okay and after that you will see that the very less part of the model building right the 15 to 20 percent of your overall data duration okay